clients or you're in a high stakes meeting, do you get, can someone unmute and tell me what they think the number one question I get asked is, do you before get I nervous. stand up, do I get? Nervous. Nervous. It nervous. really doesn't matter. Literally, I have done this program in Spain, in Bulgaria, and in Bangladesh. They want to know, do I get nervous? So I want to share four key things with you today that whether you are presenting virtually or in person, four basic things that you can do in every interaction to maximize them. So it brings us to this, which is why are we here in this session together? You know, why are we here? What, what are we doing spending an hour together when there's so much else we couldn't be doing during lockdown? So I want you to take a moment and think about the people you are impacting currently. So we have gadgetstore.co.za. So think about who your customers are, your current customers, your potential customers, or Charlene Brett. Who are the people you want to impact virtually? And it's always interesting because ultimately it's the customer, but who do you have to impact in order to reach the customer? And what if as a result of our time in this session, you do what Emerald the chef says, just before he adds flavor to food and before he says, bam, he says, let's kick it up a notch. And that's why we're here. You are all highly intelligent people. I see we have, I don't know if it's Eskel Jarwitz or I'm assuming it's Herschel on the line, but Herschel, you have incredible presence and you are such a good leader, but what if we could just take this to another level? And that's my goal in the time we have. I will talk and then I will make it very interactive because I know a lot of you will have questions, but also you have best practices. So beginning this process of virtual or in-person presence, the first part actually has to do with yourself and has to do with coming across with ease and confidence. And I call that the F part of lighting the fire. So as you are watching this in this moment, I want you to think about how would you rate your current state of energy and optimism? Now, given COVID-19 and the impact on our personal and professional lives, it has been quite devastating for many of us. So I want you to take inventory and say on a scale of one to 10, how are you feeling right now? If you were to go into a high stakes meeting or have a very important Zoom presentation, would you come across with ease and comfort and confidence? So just question to self, how are you feeling? Now, some people's businesses have increased incrementally. Some have been totally devastated, but the reality is wherever you're at in terms of business, what has been going on has impacted us. So the first part of increasing your virtual impact is actually got to do with how you feel about yourself. So it is what I call the F part of lighting a fire. So I want you to keep it quite easy for you so that you would have it. And the first part, is to develop something called your positive emotional memory database. And what that is, is a series of positive past memories. So I want you to, as you're watching this, think about over the last five years, what's been your most validating moment? What's been an Alicia zone moment where you've gone, I nailed it, that was remarkable. Now this can be something personal or professional. So you can see a couple of mine. Um, if you go on to speak of you, you'll see there I am with John Oliver, my picture with Nelson Mandela. And then when I think about my little children, it always made me smile. So they were on my positive emotional memory database. When they became teenagers, I took them off. So there I am about to interview Anthony Hopkins. And I walk into my interview with Anthony Hopkins and I have that moment, that moment that some of you may have had when you go into a situation where you feel the person you are communicating with has more power than you do. And I had that moment of real nervousness. It's a kind of shutdown. Someone once explained it to me as a dark tunnel. You almost go into a state of what we call amygdala hijack where the same rational part of your brain is hijacked by your primitive brain. It's a state that we call fight, flight, or freeze. 
And I went into that moment, I thought, oh, what am I going to say to this man? And then I did something that I'm asking you all to do. And that is, I accessed positive past memory. And I started to think about moments that were deeply validating for me. And as I did this, I felt this calm come over me. And I walked into the interview with Anthony Hopkins and I was very relaxed. I said, Mr. Hopkins, uh, Matthew McConaughey says, you are one of the most disciplined actors he's ever worked with, are you? And we had a great conversation. Conversely, when I interviewed Richard Gere, I forgot to remind myself of who I was. And he said, in response to my question of, I believe you're doing a movie with Julia Roberts, he said, who told you that? And I froze for a moment. So the first part of maximizing your virtual presence or your in-person presence has to do with how you are feeling about yourself. So my homework for everyone in this is to build up inventory, build up a series of positive past experiences that are easily accessible. And that if you are about, like I'm doing right now, about to present to a group of people, you are deeply in your zone and you are deeply reminded that you are not just as good as your last experience. You're a culmination of your success. And never before has it been more important than right now where there's so many external factors in our lives that are impacting the way we are feeling. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in real estate, Herschel Jarwitz, or you are selling electronic gadgets or face masks. People want to do business in person and virtually with people who have a sense of joy and positivity. And it's very hard to have that. So the first part of lighting a fire has to do with how you feel about yourself. And I just ask you to think about how do you feel about yourself in this very moment? So, we're going to talk about how you feel about yourself in terms of how you're showing up in your virtual world. Are you showing up as energetic, as present, as a participator? And it's very easy in this virtual world, and I see some of us have our cameras on, and I understand that some of you don't. But in a business world, if you're going to show up virtually, show up with your camera. Because think about this, a personal brand is how you show up in the minds of the people you impact. Now we are impacting people in a virtual world. So how you show up in my mind is going to be, were you present in that particular meeting? Did you look energetic? Did you look put together? And put together can be you're wearing a t-shirt and I won't see the shorts, but you look like you would like other people to see you. So it's an interesting thing, right? Think about this, a brand for a product or a company is like a reputation for a person. Your reputation is how you show up in my mind and how you show up in my mind is based on every interaction I have of you. So I got into this call earlier and there was Tracy and Laurie and Alicia and they were both positive and all of them energetic and present. And that's my impression of them. So as we are doing so much more business virtually, please ask yourself, how do I feel about myself? And is the way I am coming across in harmony with, congruent with the overall way I want to be perceived? So if you've just joined us, put me on speaker view just so you can see my slide behind me, go back to gallery afterwards, but how I feel about myself. And as I'm doing this, please do some internal inventory. I want you to think about Trevor Levy, the last couple of calls you've had. How did you show up? Now, when I say show up with a sense of joy, that doesn't mean you have to walk around like you're on crack. The reality is, this is a tough scenario. I want to be authentic, but I want to be aware that how I feel about myself impacts the impression and how I project, okay? So lighting the fire, develop a positive emotional memory database. I rely on it all the time. 
my business as a professional speaker has gone from doing big keynotes for 350, 400, 500 people and lots of workshops to being in my study as you see me now. And I've had to replay that positive emotional memory database and create neural pathways. And this is such a powerful part of what I share with you today because positive thought is very much like Teflon, whereas negative thought is like Velcro. And never before has it been more important that we remind ourselves of the positive. The second part of enhancing your overall presence, both in person and virtually, is to show genuine interest. Now, how do we do this in a virtual world? So on your webinars and Zoominars and whether you're using Google Hangouts, and Alicia brought it up earlier, if I look down at you right now, I'm looking at Charlene, I'm looking at Jody, I'm looking at Beryl, so lovely to see Beryl. And I look at Ian and Nadine, oh, so lovely to see all these people. Can you see I'm looking down at you? And Eskel, I'm assuming that Eskel is Herschel and it's so fabulous. And David Seidel and Brad and Anton and Rolly, can you see I'm looking down at you? But actually look at the difference when I do this, Helene, and I do that. Can you see the difference? Right, Jeremy, when I do that, I'm not looking at you. When I do that, I'm looking into my camera, which in a way is counterintuitive, is it not? Now, I'm not going to do a critique of everybody and their various shots because that would not be fair and you weren't prepared for this. But I want you to be aware that your virtual presence is I'm looking at you in the same way that if Jeremy Craig and I were having coffee, which I wish we were, at oh voodoo lily that would be so nice jeremy um and i hope we get it you know where voodoo lily is corner of renrose avenue where my mother lives but i want you to be aware that i would talk to you and i would look at you right because we know that eye contact is such a powerful non-verbal so in the same way that i would do that look into your camera when you're talking it's fine to glance down because we know what you're doing so showing genuine interest in others is very easy for those of you who are watching this, who are natural empaths, your listeners, you're what I call thoughtful. We call you the thinkers and the people that are steady and very empathetic. Now, for those of us, and I wish I could see all of you, and you can raise your hand to me, those of you who are more fast paced and outspoken, if you don't mind those, if you can see, raise your hands. Okay, fast paced and outspoken. Charlene, Alicia, definitely, right? For those of you who are fast paced and outspoken, really listening is so critical in these calls because I'm not getting all the cues, right? I can't see all of you. I can see Laurie from here up. I can see Nadine. So you have to listen and observe on a level that you haven't before. I love Bill Nye, the science guy, says everyone you meet knows something you don't. And then Scott Peck, who wrote The Road Less Traveled, says, put yourself aside. Now, Trevor is selling gadgets and a big part of his business at gadgetstore.co.za, ZA, ZA and ZA, Trevor, is online. But you are still communicating with people and they may call you and finding out in sales, what do people really want? I had an interview yesterday with somebody who works for Rodan and Fields, and I don't know how familiar you are. It's a multi-level, very successful American cosmetic company. And I'm going through, she's like a top, top saleswoman. And I said to her, what is the most important thing in sales? She says, you know, you've just got to listen to people. And I'm going, I call that a BLO. And if you want to know what a BLO is, put it in the chat or think about it. What do you think is a BLO? It's a blinding light of the obvious, Right. <laughs> and virtual interest is so important. And that can be, I call you, I really listen. So what I'm sharing with you now is a series of BLOs, showing genuine concerned interest. Your in-person or your virtual presence depends on you coming across as confident, competent, knowledgeable. That is as important, and it is the, as important to really listen and certainly if you're in real estate, am I really listening? Am I hearing you? Am I asking you qualifying questions? Tell me more about that. 
after today's call, am I calling Charlene Brett and saying, Charlene, you've got playitsafe.co.za or .za. I would love you to send something to my mother who happens to live in Renrose Avenue, Birdhaven. My point is follow up with at least one person that you can then see when you go to gallery view after today, show genuine interest. The R part of lighting the fire is to relax. It is a very virtual is not easy. So you want to relax, I always say, Elvin Toffler said it best. The less you need something, the more power you have. So just that sense of relaxation. Also, the R of lighting the fire is relationships, 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 which means, am I building relationships on LinkedIn? Am I, after today, seeing who's on this call and maybe we can speak to Helene and Tracy and Lori and, and get everybody's numbers so that you can link in with them? You cannot quantify what having one new person in your network can do. And we have to work so much harder virtually because if we were doing a breakfast meeting or if Herschel Jarwitz was doing an incredible Jarwitz real estate event and you were all invited and we were drinking champagne, we would naturally connect and talk to each other, right? It would be so nice. Herschel, I can't wait until you're doing that. Or if it's Eskel, I'm not sure, but I see somebody, Jarwitz. But it's, it would be so organic to do that. This is not organic. My sitting here talking to you in this format is so much harder than we, if we were in person. So I have to show genuine interest and I have to make sure that my message is focused on you, picking up the cues, but also remembering that afterwards, after your meetings, after your virtual conversations, it's a time to connect. And we will talk about LinkedIn and various other things afterwards. I want to make it interactive. So the E part of lighting a fire in the virtual world is energy, excitement, and enthusiasm. And I want to share one last slide with you, which is like a rocket launch. And I want you to keep this image in your mind for now and forevermore, please. It's a great image that will sustain and stay with you. That is Atlanta at night. I just thought I'd share something a little different. And by the way, for the purposes of these slides, that building with the gold top was actually behind me. And I moved it to the side because otherwise I looked like I was some kind of royalty or space age character. So why I draw an analogy between all communication and a rocket is in your virtual world, there's two aspects. There's what you say, and there's how you say it. So what you say is like the rocket. How you say it is like the propulsion. If you have a perfect rocket, perfect content and faulty delivery, if you have a perfect rocket and faulty propulsion, five, four, three, two, one, it may take off, but it will dive. So I want you to think about both in person and virtually, all your communication is a combination of content and delivery. Now, when I'm on a call like this and I'm seeing you, it's what I'm saying, but it's also my delivery is my eye contact, my body language, my vocal inflection, my slides. It's all of that. It's what I'm saying and how I'm saying it. On a phone call, which is your other very prolific virtual communication, your voice is the what and the how. Email and text your words are the what and the how. So think about the difference. If I say to Ian Jacobsberg, Ian, listen, there seems to be a problem, hey? It's very different between Ian, there seems to be a problem, or there seems to be some miscommunication as opposed to Nadine, what happened? So I want you to be very aware of the what and the how, and it's equally important virtually. So what I'm seeing in my virtual world, and I've been doing lots of meetings since March 12th, is there's coming across as I'm energized, I'm looking into the camera. My lighting, as you can see, is in front of me. And I'm, Meg looks like your lighting is in front of you. Now, Meg, is that a virtual background or a virtual background? Okay, but you look like your lighting is in front of you. Please, what I see all the time is you have a window behind you. So Ian, if you were to turn and your window was in front of you, your whole light would be different. Because when the window is behind me, 
I look like a cardboard cutout. So there's what you say and there's how you say it. There's the verbal and the nonverbal. And virtually, what is your nonverbal? Virtually, your nonverbal is your background. Now, it's fine. You're going to have kids shouting and screaming and you just explain it and put yourself on mute. But think about the clutter behind you. Think about your lighting. Think about your verbal and nonverbal language and then think about your eye contact. So those are the four things before we got into a conversation that I wanted to share with you. It's also very topical today on the subject of virtual presence. What you say in your social media. Need I tell you that the guy, and I met him on a plane once from CrossFit. His name is Greg. Does the story familiar? Just not if it is. So Greg from CrossFit tweeted something about George Floyd or, or Floyd 19 is the biggest combat to COVID. Anyway, needless to say, gyms across America have now dropped Greg from CrossFit. So it's our virtual presence is a combination of our meetings and calls, our emails, our texts, and everything we put out on social media. So if our brand is how we show up in the minds of the people we currently impact and choose to impact, are you impacting virtually as much as you can? And are you doing as well virtually as you do in person? So I'll go back to the fire key things that you want to do, which is to feel good about yourself so that you exude this positive energy. You show genuine interest and that's in everything you do. What value am I offering? There's a sense of relaxation, but relationship building, relationship building, relationship building, and then engaging on all platforms with a level of energy, excitement, and enthusiasm. I would like to get questions from you, questions, ideas, thoughts, things you want to ask me about any aspect of your virtual presence. I'm looking in the chat if there are any reading glasses and fast sight sightedness. So that is a problem asks uh, somebody about camera. It's a difficult one. I've got um, multifocals, but they're called transitions. So I can see far and near, which is the ideal. But I will tell you that a lot of people have issues with these. I find them very easy, but that is your best option. It's a difficult one because I'm asking you to look into camera. And if that's difficult in terms of having notes around you. So it really is situational. Does anybody have what they are finding reading glasses present a problem? Anybody having that experience and has found a solution for them? I found a solution by being transitions. Anybody else have an issue with that? Anybody else found a solution to that problem? Nadia, I found a solution. Yes. I had uh, cataract operation. Now I can see perfectly without glasses. It's totally perfectly no glasses after the cataract. That's no remarkable. But, uh, if I drive uh, for long distances, I need some glasses. But basically, and I did it the opposite to the way I used to be. Because my husband, Zami, is 89, Baruch Hashem, and he doesn't wear glasses. He's a lawyer still. It's incredible. And people can see him reading this document perfectly. So I thought this was fantastic. Okay. So and Tracy also recently had cataract surgery. So number one, go see the ophthalmologist. But the, the, the fact is, I would say, what are you doing most on your call? So right now, I need to be able to read the chat. Right. That's most important for me. And I need to be able to recognize my slides so I can change them. That's most important for me. So what's most important for you in your virtual communication? And then use the glasses that do that. But the question is about notes. If you're reading something and you need your notes, what do you do? Okay, so a couple of tricks. If you're mm -hmm. on a call like this, and because this is a subject I'm very familiar with, I haven't done it, but put post-its around your computer so that you can glance down, but it's not like this. It's not like I'm looking down at my notes. If I had post-its around my computer, I could literally glance at them and look back. And by the way, it's no different if you're giving an actual presentation. If you have notes in front of you, 
I always recommend that you do about that size. And if you look at my CNN segments, even on CNN, I used to take a piece of paper that size and I glanced down and looked at my notes if I needed to because I didn't use a teleprompter. As long as your audience knows what you're doing, you're fine. I did a keynote last week for a group of 64 concierge physicians on exactly this, on how do they come across well because they're doing telemedicine now. And one of the things I said is don't just look away. Um, by the way, I'm looking away for a moment because I'm going to get your file. Just explain, or um, I'm looking down because I'm taking notes, or explain to people. There's a wonderful thing in the absence of proper information, people come to their own conclusions. It's no different. All I had hoped to do in this call was to say, look, your virtual presence is a five day seminar because it's everything from what does your logo look like to your website. And you have Helene Itzkin, who is a master editor and graphic designer supreme. But the reality is we're talking about virtual presence and I narrowed it down to, you are communicating now virtually as opposed to in person? And are you maximizing those opportunities to come across as the best version of yourself? And are you maximizing those opportunities to network? Because you're all on this call now, and some of you, and it's a very interesting thing, if your camera is off, and this is statistically, 67% of people whose cameras are off are multitasking. In fact, I'm sure it's more. If your camera is on, and I knew it was you, Herschel. So happy to see Herschel. Oh, how wonderful. And Herschel, Herschel really exemplifies this in my interactions with him and my virtual interactions with him, because the last time I actually saw him in person was in primary school, I think, or maybe a few years after. But And Herschel's done such a good job of leading his teams to understand these foundational things. But you know what happens to all of us? We get jaded. Because the reality is we are living in a difficult scenario. We can't even quantify what is going on in our little words and our outer world, even if your little inner world is working out well right now, none of us can ignore what is happening in the outer world. So here I am in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm still speaking and training and I can work virtually, but I cannot ignore that there are riots and that there's huge unrest and huge fury going on right now in this country. And it is depressing. I can't ignore that. So yes, I always tell people both my daughters got married last year and, you know, at the stage of my life, I've, I've reached a level of peace, but I can't ignore what's going on. So what happens is we're so busy dealing with all the outside world and now we're saying do business and Herschel for your realtors, you're saying to them do business in what is a complicated scenario and never before has it been more important that they build these relationships. And one of the things I say is network most when you need it least. And right now we need it. We need our networks. So have you deposited before you withdraw? Who on this call right now, whether it's Andy Seitovitz or Herschel, and by the way, anybody who is selling their house, who wants to, or who wants to buy, there is no and I don't know if we have other realtors on this line, but I have had personal experience with Herschel and you are in very good hands. But again, what makes him and his realtors excellent, and if you've got other realtors on the call, then you too, is you do business with people you like. You do, people, do business with people you're interested in. And doing it virtually is a lot of effort. It's a lot more effort virtually. So are you taking the time to call people and say things like, how are you managing during lockdown? What's one good thing that's happened? What's one difficult thing? So there are three aspects that I learned as a journalist of how I could interview anybody, anytime, any place. And the same applies to our virtual networking. And that is, we all have a past, we all have a present, and we all have a future. After this call or after a business call, do I call Anton Kramer, Kramer and say, let's link in, let's stay friends. Anton, I think I know you because you're familiar to me, but do I really know you? Have I ever had a conversation with you? And I'll take Helene as an example. I have known Helene since I was a little girl. Our parents were friends and her dad was very good friends with my late uncle. But until I got involved with Orjek, did I really have a conversation with her and understand who she really was? 
So if you think of networking is the ability to go from a connection to a conversation, to a collaboration, we have to do it online. And that means taking note and taking the time to call email. Another excellent thing in this virtual world, if I see Stan Feinstein, and I know that Stan is interested in X, what can I send him? Um, I happen to know that uh, Natalie Liknitsky has a son in Canada, and I send her something about Canada, or you know Natalie in the night galleries and how remarkable she's been in the art world of South Africa. And I see something that she wrote, or I see something and I say, Natalie, this made me think of you. Natalie wrote me the most beautiful email recently, and I am going to respond because I want to give it the time it deserves. But every one of us has to be more proactive now than we've ever been. So what I'm hoping that each of one of you will do after this session is say, who have I been meaning to be in touch with? And I haven't because there's so much noise going on in my head. And you know what? After this call, I'm actually going to call them. And I'm just going to go, I wanted to check in with you. How are you doing? What's the best thing that's happened during, I mean, it's very hard to say that, but we call it the sweet and the sour, which is just, Haley, you, I can see, you know, what, what time has it been? How are things going? What's your biggest challenge in lockdown? I've been asking that. So what I did to my clients early on in this process, and I hope this helps you, and then I would love some more uh, questions, is I didn't reach out to all my clients and go, hello, are you doing training? Because you know what? They're not, because everybody is grappling to survive. But what I did was I sent out notes that said the following. Hi, thinking of you during this unprecedented time. Just to let you know, all my programs are now available virtually. I can do keynotes, I can do workshops. Please let me know how I can assist and be a resource to you. Look forward to being in touch. And I felt that was the right tone because we all want to continue doing business, but the tone was, look, I am available. It's not pushy, but I want to know how I can assist you. And then what I did a few weeks later was, I reached out to my core clients, which are Home Depot and Coca-Cola and Porsche and Samsung. And I, I reached out to them and I said, here's some titles for some new programs. Are there any tweaks you think I should make? And they all came back to me with ideas. So it was always interesting is one of the things you can do is ask people for advice and guidance. So I'd like to know if there are any other questions. What angle should the camera be at? Sometimes it can be a laptop or headphone. Okay, so this is interesting. I am not using my computer laptop because my computer camera, because I wanted a more high quality camera. So what I did was I have a Logitech, but if you have a camera that is on your laptop, you want to be eye level. And eye level means you might have to actually put it on some books. So I've got a YouTube video out and I'll make sure that I send it to all of you and I demonstrate the four things you need to know about coming across well on your camera. Number one is eye contact. So are you eye level to your camera? Because what pe people tend to do is they tend to look down or are they looking like that? How many of you seen like that? So if you don't get a new camera and I don't know if our gadgetstore.co.za um, or ZA. I don't know if you sell cameras, but I was telling everybody at the beginning of the store, my Logitech was about $39.99 or $49 pre-COVID. And then it was $249 three weeks later. And Best Buy and all the stores in Atlanta, you could not buy a camera. So eye level to camera or lift your laptop onto books so that you're eye level. Okay. And then I'll go through the four things you need to know. The second thing is your lighting. Some of you are masterful at it. I can see um, Moshe Immerman has a very interesting photo app. I recommend that if you are going to stop video and I'll show you what I've got. Can you see, I just have a professional photo. I think it's maybe a little too professional. I'm thinking about changing it to something that is literally in my studio setting that I'm in right now. But you want to have a photograph that represents you you don't want a black screen. And I see we've got lots of black screens with just your names. It's very easy to put in a photograph. It's just more personal. 
Because remember virtually how you show up in the minds of the people you impact. So think about that. So lighting, lighting, lighting. And then I mentioned your backgrounds. Most of you have very neutral backgrounds. That's absolutely fine. Beryl, if you take your laptop, I don't know how many of you can see but Beryl, if you put on gallery view now and you actually tilt your, that is so much better. Can you all see the difference? Can you see the difference? Because she had too much headroom and now you're looking at me and you're looking into the camera and Sylvia could do the same thing and makes lighting is good. I mean, I don't, Natalie, yours is excellent. I'm very impressed with you. Natalie says she's not computer literate, but in fact she is. And then backgrounds, um, there's my Atlanta at night background and there are some other backgrounds you can use. I, this is, it depends, depending on what you want. If you've got a very classic study background yourself, that's a wonderful thing to have. Um, I tend to have a green screen behind me. So I sometimes just go to a background that is just a study that just looks like a study or something like that. So there I am. Now, if you really know, you could see the outline a little bit, but if I want to look comfortable and I'm having a chat to someone, I might just go to my study as opposed to my studio, which looks slightly different. But these are all things to take into account as we communicate more virtually. The way you show up in my mind is also made up of how you show up on these calls. And if you're using a lot of these calls, find either a place in your house that, so Natalie, is that a virtual background behind you or is that your house? When you said hello to me, I had a virtual background from Plettenberg Bay that I'd been playing around with and I didn't realize was on when I came on. But then I put on my, well, where I am, what would you call that, my real background. That looks and beautiful. I, the best background because this is where all my art books are and why would I want a background of Plettenberg Bay? Well both work but Natalie is a legend in the South African art industry and having her art books. Now remember at the beginning of the program today I spoke about your positive emotional memory database. If I had those art books and they brought me joy I would have them there. I have photos of my daughter's weddings at a place that is close and accessible. So when I am feeling down, which of course is inevitable in this period of our lives. I just can glance at those and those make me feel good. So what is tangible and intangible that assists you? So any other questions? I see the camera, can't see you are just interacting with the green light. How do you keep looking at the camera when you can see everyone you're just interacting with the green light? I have to say now, I have been in television for most of my life. So I am very used to looking into the camera. It is counterintuitive. And even when people are being interviewed on CNN, often the monitor, so the camera might be there, but the monitor where the anchor is talking to them, if it's virtual, is down there. And if you don't tell them to look into the camera, they're looking down. So, I mean, I've been doing this for most of my life, but it is counterintuitive. So what I have been saying to people that I've been coaching and training and doing virtual presentations with, it's just make sure that you're Laptop is lifted enough so that it's effortless to look and be aware of glancing down, not looking down. And the third, so those are the important things. I'm looking at any COVID lockdowns have actually created an opportunity to reach out because there's a shared concern. This immediately creates a connection with people and an icebreaker. That is so true. I think this whole period has made us more open. But what I see with people is when you are in deep in a state of deep anxiety, it is sometimes difficult to reach out. And, and that's what we have to break. And I love Honoré de Balzac. He said, there is no greater impediment to getting on well with other people than being ill at ease with yourself. And it's something to consider as we navigate this period in our lives. Anybody else? want a question. Do you think it's better to screen share docs or let each person have a copy in front of them? So that's a very, Herschel says he thinks it's better to share. It's circumstantial. It really is circumstantial. So I like what Herschel is saying, share, make it immediate, because most people want the immediacy of it. 
But I, in these calls, try and make everything as effortless as possible, which is why I do my slides myself in this way, because it is the least possibility for any glitches. Also, I don't have to stop and share. But in a meeting, if you do share, make sure everything else is off your screen, except what you want to share so you can come to it effortlessly and practice and practice, practice, practice. I made the terrible mistake two weekends ago. I don't know if any of you were on it, but I decided instead of Zoom meeting, which is what we're on now, which I much prefer, I decided I'm gonna do a Zoom webinar so that I can tape it and people can look at it afterwards. And just before the Zoom webinar, I decided to go YouTube live, YouTube and Facebook live, just a few minutes before. And I had everything set up, the video, and I go live because if you have the professional Zoom, it allows you to do that. Well, 190, we had 190 people registered and there were about 98 because you can go up to 100 on the Zoom webinar platform unless you pay for more. And I got to 100 people and the slides just were not seamless. Something had happened between me going YouTube live and transitioning. So I cannot stress enough. It's People are, are understanding, right? Jody's nodding. I mean, they're understanding if your technology doesn't work perfectly now. But I can tell you in a couple of months, it's not going to be so acceptable. It's like we're still new. We're still new at this. But in a couple of months, you will be expected to have seamless technology. However, if your technology doesn't work, it is perfectly okay to be transparent and the R of lighting the fire relaxed. There seems to be an issue and just carry on. Or if you make a mistake, say, can I rephrase that? These things are all just be transparent, be authentic and don't look flustered. Oh, Natalie said, I saw that webinar and you gave us a lesson on how to deal with problems. Two things. So thank you, Natalie. But I will tell you, I am a firm believer in trying new things, right? We all have to try new things during this period of our lives. And I tried something new and I didn't feel good about it. And I had to talk to myself in the same way that I talked to any of you. I had to say, you tried it. It wasn't perfect. There's Eckhart Tolle, and I'm sure that the Torah says this as well, which is learn from the past, but don't regret it. Easier said than done. Prepare for the future, but don't be anxious about it. And then live in the present. And I, after really decoding what I did wrong and being absolutely furious with myself, and then I get this lovely email from Natalie saying, no, it was lovely. You handled it with aplomb. So thank you, because I was really angry with myself. I was mainly angry that I decided to go to YouTube and then angry that the technology was not seamless. So we're all trying. I tried something called StreamYard the other day, and StreamYard allows you to go live on this and then allows you to go to multi-platforms. And that seems to work really well. So we could have a whole other conversation about what platforms are out there to be sharing your services, Trevor. I'm, I know you've got a great website, but are you using Instagram as well as you could? Are you using Facebook? I, I like LinkedIn. Everybody's using TikTok now. I'm not ready for TikTok. I don't think I'm funny enough for TikTok although my nephew has absolutely convinced. Now, you know that Alicia has these wonderful resources on bullying. Now, Alicia, if you have children and you want the book, it is remarkable and it comes with a DVD and various other things. I'm sure she's now gone to a very digital format with it. But Alicia, you, TikTok could be a very good format, virtual format for you for that. So I don't, it is already 10.52. And I see Natalie has done a talk for Orchard. She is wonderful. You are exemplary. And, you know, Natalie, there are a couple of things if we look at Natalie, both her remarkable contribution to the world of art, but also how she's managed to adapt to the virtual world. Um, I did a blog recently and I said, baby boomers to baby zoomers, it's time to grow up. Now we've got different age groups on this call. I can see we've got Laurie in her 20s. We've got some people in their 30s. We've got some people like Derek who is indeterminable because I can't see his lighting so good. Herschel, I don't know if you even don't know, but we've got different levels of comfort with our technology. So all I can say to all of us is find out what you need to use. Stan, I am so impressed that you're on this call because my mother who lives in Renrose Avenue, Birdhaven is going to have to get a link. And Martin Lewison, how lovely to see you. 
but I'm seeing a lovely picture of Martin. So every single person, if we do this again, either has a picture up, Derek, Deborah, Glenda, Aviva, Shimron, and by the way, Laurie is a technical genius, Laurie, who is on this call, who is part of Autjet. And I promise you, if you email Laurie or Helene or Tracy and just say, you know, Nadia said, I need to update my LinkedIn profile. On my LinkedIn profile, I should have a professional photo that represents me in the best possible way. On my LinkedIn profile, I should be searchable in my description. I'm going to end with this, which is part of your virtual presence is if I Google you, what comes up? Now, Trevor Levy has gadgetstore.co.za, Charlene has playitsafe.co.za, or to my American viewers.ca. Alicia Thomas Wolf has what? What is your URL for the website on the bullying? Unmute so you can tell us. Uh, it's powerful.rocks, www.powerful.rocks. R O C K S. Yeah, like Elvis. Beautiful. Okay, let's share these resources. Now, the nicest thing I can do in networking for Alicia, for Trevor, for Herschel, for Charlene, is if they tweet something or they put something out on social media is to share it and make a comment. We speak about networking as being a go-giver as much as a go-getter. The best thing you can give other people, you might not be able to give them a contact, but you might be able to reaffirm them on social media. Somebody who's been remarkable to you, and Herschel, this is a tip for realtors, is if someone's been remarkable to them, write a LinkedIn, not a quick endorsement, write a proper, thoughtful LinkedIn recommendation. I promise you that person will be so grateful. They will have you at top of mind because in business, what do we want to be? If you're thinking of a speaker and a woman speaker in the area that I speak about, I want you to think about me. Now, it's not going to be that you think about me if you don't need me, but I want you to think about me if you do need me. And the same with Trevor and the same with Charlene and the same with any single one of us. Beryl Porter, the most wonderful walking tours of Johannesburg. So if I've got guests coming into Johannesburg and hopefully Beryl, that will happen sooner rather than later. The first person I want to think about is Beryl. So are you creating a virtual presence? in the way that you should and could. I know that's a lot of information. It's 10.55. Last thoughts, questions. Nadia, what about headphones? I'm always reluctant to wear them. Okay, so it's interesting. I think, Jeremy, it is okay to have your headphones. So I have tried everything. I started off with this, and then I decided for my, which would be fine for today's talk. Can everybody see them, my headphones? But when I started doing interviews for my YouTube, I wanted my hair to look better. So I took my headphones out and I have a very fancy microphone. I think it is perfectly acceptable to have headphones. I, I, I really do. I don't think if I was wearing these right now, I would only look, it's, it's a kind of sign of virtual cool. I also had the um, Apple ear, earbuds, right, Trevor? I'm sure you can get those from Trevor or a version of them. My daughter just said to me, I said, mom, you're not really using them, are you? And so I gave them to her, which of course now I'm sorry because I can hear the dinging. I think I might have to get them back. New norms for the virtual world, perfectly okay to wear a headset, perfectly okay. As long as the sound is good and it's clear, you know, we're not a beauty competition. I've got my glasses on, I do my own makeup, but I want to come across as the best version of myself, whatever that is. I've worked in television for my whole career. Going virtual from the 13th of March was the first time I'd ever done anything on television as such and doing videos where I had not had professional makeup. And I partnered with another Jewish South African, Mark Schneider, and he has Future Self Academy. And we just partnered on sharing my book, which is own your network, expert networking in person and online. And we created an online course and I had someone come and video it with no makeup and it was quite liberating. Ladies, I'm telling you, Tracy, having to do my own everything. First world problems, right? But I do have three books um, and you can get them online. One is Own Your Space. And I did it with Autjet member, Laurie Milner. And that's really a woman's guide to polish, poise and empowerment. A lot of this information is in there. I've got Own Your Network, which is expert networking in person and online. And in fact, I'll ask Mark to send everyone the link. He's created a very reasonable online course. And then I've got Small Changes, Big Impact, which I wrote 
with the girl who is now the youngest CEO and famous in America. Her name is Kat Cole. She started off as a Hooters girl and we partnered. She's now the CEO of Focus Brands and we wrote Maximize Your Presence and Leverage the Power of Your Personal Brand. And as we share this today, whether we're in Atlanta, Georgia, Johannesburg, South Africa, Cape Town, Israel, or Jody, please unmute. Are you still in LA? Yes. Jody, where are you? I'm in South Africa. Oh, you're in South Africa. So you aren't the Jody who was in LA. Different Jody. No, different Jody. I had Jody, such a similar last name, who was in LA and she was a South African living in LA and she couldn't get back to Australia. Okay, wrong Jody. So is there anybody who on this call wanted to share a website, something they do, if we've still got five minutes? Um, something, just raise your hand and tell us. We've got, um, it's not bullying rocks. It, just let me write it down again, Alicia. <laughs> it's what rocks? www.powerful.rocks. And powerful.rocks. And for anyone who doesn't know, it is how to turn bullying around for your child in around 20 minutes without needing to know psychology. Oh, and let me tell you, I wish Alicia could sing us her song because it would be a great way to end this, but I won't do that to you, Alicia. <laughs> I mean, I could croak it out. <laughs> um, yes, I think Tracy and Helene and Laurie will be fine with that. Yes, really? Okay. Are you all, just nod if you're okay. Yeah. Perfect, go for it. Okay. Um... I am, ah, let me just, just, can you, and if you see my hands go up, you're all supposed to copy me. Really? Hey. Okay. <laughs> I am powerful. I am powerful. <laughs> if someone says something mean to make you feel bad, take the bad feeling and make it small and throw it far away. Cause I'm powerful. I love it. <laughs> Show us your t-shirt. Uh, and really, you know, oh, I love it. And on the subject of powerful, I mean, the work that Ortjek does um, around South Africa and the world is powerful and remarkable. And to Helene and Tracy and Laurie, the work you do is extraordinary. And bringing things to us as a community, we want to take a moment to thank you. <clears throat> Any last thoughts? And by yes. the way, hello, David. What a pleasure to see you, David. Nice to see you again. Ah, lovely. Any I, last I, thoughts, David? I just wanted to ask your opinion on something. So I've created, I created a business game, which was a finance game, and we've now put it online. Fabulous. It, well done. We're struggling with the concept of people having to learn two things. One is the actual game, which they would mm -hmm. normally learn, but the other mm -hmm. thing is learning to do it online themselves. Okay, so uh, okay, my suggestion, and I know we've got some brilliant business minds on this Zoom and R, is have a facilitator. You can train up facilitators. It's just too difficult. So what I would do is part of your thing could say, this is an online game, um, call this number for a facilitator. That's what I would do. Seriously, it's just, or, we will train your someone if you're doing it for a Coca-Cola or a Investec or something, we'll train somebody to be your facilitator. And why I say that is when I'm doing my two hour webinars and sessions, I have a young lady who runs all my chats and all my polls and all my slides because it needs to be more. I have to have more interactivity than this. And I've just found that it is very difficult. That is one of the challenges people are having in this virtual world, right? to multitask. Yeah. So David, you've got to have something, even if it's a train the trainer or a something. And I don't know, maybe Helene, Tracy, Laurie be open to getting everybody to play the game, but you're asking people a lot to, to do both. And that's, that is coming from a boomer ex. I'm, I'm not a total boomer. I'm a boomer ex. I'm on the cusp. And maybe if it was Lori Kruger, no problem. She would get it. But for those of us where technology is not absolutely intuitive, 
That's my, my thoughts. I don't know, what do you say, Ian, Trevor, thoughts on that? Ian, any thoughts? Yeah. Yes, well, um, I mean, when it comes to, I mean, I, I have had to learn very quickly how to use various uh, methods. We've, uh, our, our office, I, I'm a commercial attorney for what it's worth. Um, we went on to virtual so before the lockdowns came and we've had to learn very quickly. Um, and uh, it's been an eye opener and uh, I feel like I've just, uh, may, may, maybe lost 30 years of age uh, overnight. Ah, <laughs> wow, Ian. Become a generation Y. <laughs> okay, I love it. Um, you know, but, but, my but, point but seriously, is... Seriously, we found these tools are actually very, very useful. And uh, I think, again, this, uh, the, 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 this pandemic hasn't been all bad. We've all sort of learned a lot of skills. There's, <laughs> there's no question, but, you know, if David's got this online game... Unless it is so intuitive and you're doing it as a team building, I, I mean, David, I would I would put together maybe a, you know, some kind of people you admire and respect and different age groups and get them to play it mm. and yeah. get their opinion on, on how you would facilitate it. That's yeah. an idea. Yeah. Okay. So thoughts on that. But, I've been um, using it as a training tool and it's just... It I sounds think it's wonderful for people to learn everything at once. So maybe, yeah, maybe it needs to be split over time and get somebody else to assist. But you know, there's right. so many available people right now. I mean, personally, I just, I'm, I'm kind of a believer in, you know, do what you're good at. I, I, I've had to learn certain technology. I've had to. Um, but what, I, I don't know. I probably would, I, if I was doing that game, I'd have to have somebody to assist. I could debrief it well, but I would need someone to assist with the technology. I mean, by the way, um, Laurie and Helene and Tracy were wonderful to play that video at the beginning of today because I've had lots of people and I've given them the video. And last week I gave a big keynote and the video played, but with no sound. So, Jeremy, what do you do? Tell us. And Jeremy has his earphones on and I don't find it distracting. <laughs> Thank you, Nadia. I'm in real estate. So I actually work uh, for, for Eskel and Jarv at uh, Herschel Javits. Um, I'm a branch manager for the Santon office. Um, so I've been with the company for a little over three years now. So yeah, I've been in real estate probably a good 16 years. So is what I said, did it resonate with you at this time? Absolutely. I mean, um, as someone uh, said earlier, you know, I, I had to learn a lot of these skills very quickly. Um, what was interesting is, you know, I was kind of taken out of my comfort zone to a large degree because when I started speaking to, to a lot of people, I actually realized that, you know, um, you know, you, you're learning something new and it, and it is making you better. Um, so when I'm addressing people, um, I've always, uh, I've always been looking at the camera because it's funny. I look at myself when I'm talking um, to people or, or talk, talking to crowds. I find I, I, I'm, I'm better able to express myself and, come across better um so i've had to learn these things along the way but i think your session has been great thank you very much you know it's so interesting you say that because it is very distracting on these calls to be looking at yourself and actually when you're looking in the camera you're not seeing yourself which is easier thank you for saying yeah. that so jeremy one quality of herschel that makes him a good leader just one quality Look, he's been an absolutely phenomenal leader. I mean, during COVID-19, I can absolutely say that um, he's guided us through this um, like an absolute champion. I, 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 you know, Herschel, Eskel, um, the group, and, um, you know, the management team as well. But, but Herschel's been absolutely alleged. Um, so, bring it and, and why I did that, Jeremy, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I can assure you that if I had to ask anybody who works with any of you, tell me about that person, they would have an answer. Now, I knew that your answer would be positive because I know Herschel, but I want to remind us all that how we show up in the minds of the people we impact is based on our interaction with them moment by moment, experience by experience. You can't fabricate or dictate how you are perceived. You create it through experience. So it's just that awareness that's part of that experience now is, is virtual. 
Any other last thoughts? It's so lovely to see Sylvia Lewison. I haven't seen her since I was 18. It's a bit of a shock actually, right? When you see someone, somebody went away, you know. Oh, I love Anthony, what did, Anton, what did you just do with your eyes? I love it. <laughs> That's good. That is really good. There's a special effect that I found on uh, Zoom that you can integrate a camera. Ah. Oh, that <laughs> is good, Anton. Oh, yes, it's quite nice. Okay. And it's you not know bad what? for a boring accountant like me. <laughs> I love it. And so what we find in the virtual world is, think about this. None of us had to dress up and drive to this meeting, right? If we'd had to dress up and drive and go to a beautiful venue and sit there and have coffee and tea, we'd be more invested. The fact that we could just put on our pajamas and dialed in makes us less. And you need to be aware of that with your virtual interactions is that people are less committed. So the importance of the four things that I shared today are so critical because you really don't have a captive audience and we are cutting through the clutter. So for those like of you comment. who give any Sorry. thoughts, ideas on that? Yeah, no, I just wanted to respond. I've actually, again, sort of enjoyed doing these Zoom conferences for the very reason that you don't have to drive there. Yeah. You don't have to worry you're going to get there late. You don't have to worry that you are going to go through the third degree with some security guard. Um, and you're actually sitting down probably a whole lot more relaxed than if you drove to Santon or whatever the Atlanta equivalent of Santon is. Um, I where there were riots recently, yes. Um, and worry about traffic and everything else. And that you may have left something behind, or no, you, you know, you you're not you're not wrong, but it does make the audience less invested. That's the yep. point, and sure. that's the part that as speakers and trainers and meeting facilitators that we have to be aware of. You know, so we just have to be aware that we have a greater challenge in this virtual world. So, for those of you who do speak either as meeting facilitators or participants or in any capacity, don't ever end your talk on a Q&A. So I'm going to ask either Tracy or Helene or Laurie if they've got any last words and then I would like to close out the session. And I love Anton Kramer. <laughs> Alicia wants to say one last thing, yes. Thanks, love. What I wanted to say was that I am now looking into my camera and talking to you, so I hope it looks like I'm- Yes, yes. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a tiny drawing of a face around the green light on my Mac. So it'll look at least I'm talking to a face. Oh, that's a good idea. I like that. Good tip, Alicia. And by the way, thank you. Excellent tip. I need to do a video and I'm petrified. I want to share with you that I did a TEDx Emery talk. So you just look up TEDx Emery own your confidence or TEDx Emery Nadia Bilchik, own your confidence. And I promise you that the four things I share in that own your confidence are very helpful. And I wrote and did that program specifically for people who feel anxiety and nervousness. So TEDx Emery, um, if somebody could put it in the chat, TEDx Emery, own your confidence. Thank you. And then um, Eskel, thanks, Nadia. Would you agree how to come across is directly proportional to the authenticity? Thank you, Eskel, from an authentic person yourself. There's no fabrication for authenticity. You, you can't fabricate a genuine desire to share. So, and that's such a true thing. And, and, and I think Eskel, we can all agree, has been a legend and, and a pillar of, of South African business, is you ha I can say to you, show genuine interest. You can't pretend to show genuine interest. You have to be genuinely interested. And there's a lovely TED talk by a woman and she speaks about how to have a conversation. And she says, all those things about nod and do this and that when you're talking, they're absolute rubbish. Because if you're interested, you don't need to do that. So be authentic. You, you can't, and, and authenticity comes from, I'm doing this for you, not to you. And the reason that our realtor, Jeremy, is so good at what he does is when Jeremy's with me, he's doing it for me, not to me. So think about that. So yes, thank you, Eskel. Excellent. And everyone stay safe and Anton useful. Any last oh, yeah. thoughts? Can I end? 
So, so I personally want to thank you for doing this for Altjet. Um, through the lockdown, we have had um, an opportunity to network with the most incredible, phenomenal people, such as yourself. So appreciated, and I'm sure Helene will say a few words too. But um, it's been an incredible hour. Thank you for teaching us new skills um, and, and, and for really giving us um, the tools to equip ourselves better in a virtual space. Um, again, to everyone that's joined us this afternoon, we thank you for your time. Orchet put up, we have regular webinars, we have a calendar up until the end of um, July with the upcoming sessions, their times and the login details. And as I said at the onset, please donate generously to Orchet so we can continue doing what we do. And thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. Nadia, we are so grateful. Um, I'm going to hand over to Helene to say the final thank you. And um, I look forward to working with you again really soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nadia, who would have thought that we would all have to walk into your world that you've been in for the last 35 years? It, we've all been forced to become presenters. We've all been forced into looking our best online. And thank you for the tips that you so generously shared with us. Thank you for being here to, this evening for you and this early evening for us. Thank you. Thank you all so much. So thank you to everybody. What we looked at today is four foundational things that you can do. Feel good about yourself, show genuine interest, relax and engage with energy, excitement and enthusiasm. I assure you all that if you do one of these things and if you reach out to just one person today that you wouldn't have, you can never quantify the impact on your personal and professional life. It has been a great pleasure and thanks to all of you. Thank you, Nadia. Goodbye. <laughs>